Hey guys, welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. In this video, I'm about probably three quarters of the way through the final build on Ratchet here. And before I get him completely finished, I want to show you what I've done so far. Originally, I was going to push Ratchet to the side and I was going to rebuild Mauler before I finished Ratchet. But to be honest with you, I went to that track a couple of times and I had so much fun, I decided I wanted to finish Ratchet 100% so that I could take I could play with him at the track while I was kind of rebuilding Mauler. So I took Ratchet completely apart so that I was back to the frame and the first thing I did is I spray painted the frame. Now I spray painted the frame with just Rust-Oleum flat black and believe me that was that was a heck of a project. I think it took it took nine and a half cans to spray the uh, the chassis. Uh, it was it was very intricate. It took me I think three to four days to do the entire thing. It did make a bit of a mess. I had to throw out some of my carpets because they got so much overspray. Um, however, I did have most of the shop curtained off while I did that. Rust-Oleum flat black is very similar to steel it uh, as, as far as how they look. So you can bring flat black up to steel it and it's hard to tell the difference between the two. The obvious difference between the two is the steel it is a lot stronger. Steel it's easier to spray. For some reason that stuff doesn't run very easily. So steel it is easier to spray. Steel it is a lot stronger. However, steel it right now is $30 a can. Rust-Oleum is $8 a can. So for the chassis, I knew it was going to take a lot. Um, so I didn't want to do it with steel it. Another reason is I didn't know how many cans it was going to take. So I knew that with Rust-Oleum flat black, I can just run up to the hardware store and buy a couple more cans of that. The only way I can get steel it is if I order it from CarTech in California and then I gotta wait three, four, five days for it to show up. So I didn't wanna run into that. So anyways, I painted the entire frame with Rust-Oleum flat black. What I do is, first of all, I go through and I wipe down every single tube of the chassis with acetone to get it as clean as possible. Then I spray it, and that's a hell of a project. And you gotta, you gotta wear a respirator and you gotta wear a Tyvek suit because you're climbing all over the thing and when you when you rattle can something like this it doesn't create a lot of overspray that travels away very far but it, it creates a lot of overspray where you are and that falls straight down so it's gonna make a real mess exactly where you're working that's why I had to I had to throw out my carpet but a lot of what you're doing, you're, you're actually laying underneath the chassis and all that crap is falling down on you. So if you're doing that, you really gotta, you gotta wear one of those Tyvek suits and you, you gotta wear a respirator, otherwise it, it's, just, it's just bad. Then you give it a couple days to dry and flat black dries pretty quick, but give it a couple of days to dry and then a lot of it will have like some overspray because it's such a slow process. So once it's had a couple days to dry, then I go over the chassis just with a just with a rag and I just wipe everything down. And it breaks up a lot of that overspray and it kind of makes everything just really smooth to the touch. So you go over the entire thing, every single tube, and you just wipe it a couple of times with a rag. Kind of kind of rough. Just like this is the actual rag I was using. This was white when I started. You just go over everything absolutely everything and you just wipe it a couple of times and basically when you do that it just it kind of breaks up the overspray and what you're left with is actually a really nice relatively durable finish it's real thin coat I'm not doing a heavy coat it's a real thin coat which makes it dry quicker and if the paint is thinner uh, it's stronger you know because it won't dent and it's it's there's less of a chance of it chipping. So anyways, that was the first part of the project, is just the massive painting of the frame. Then at that point, I started reassembling everything, and when I reassemble everything, everything gets put back together perfectly. 
And when I say perfectly, I mean, this is the final build. This is it. I'm not taking it apart to, any, to do any more fabrication. I mean, I'm still gonna take things apart, but what I'm saying is on this assembly, you're putting it back together with the intention that you're not gonna take it back apart. So everything gets painted, and a lot of my suspension components, like my control arms, steering rods, steering linkage, a lot of those I painted with steel it because number one, that doesn't take as much paint. Number two, it's easier. I can do it up on the loft. And number three, those are just, those live in an environment where they're always being sprayed with rocks and steel it is stronger. So a lot of that stuff I, I sprayed with steel it. But when I, when I walk the camera around here, you'll see that it's really hard to tell the difference between steel it and flat black. That's why I went with the flat black because it, it, it blends with the steel it so well. But anyways, on the final build, everything is painted, everything is tightened or torqued to spec, everything is loctited, and then every bolt gets what they call torque check on it so that I can just visually see if any of these bolts are loosening up. And then in addition to that, since I had taken everything apart, when I'm putting it back together, I made, I made a couple of changes because there were a few things that I really didn't like how I did it initially and I wanted it to be, th this is kind of, when I do stuff like this, this is going to sound a little cheesy, but when I take something apart, in my head, I always tell myself, when I put it back together, if I put it back together slightly better, then every time you take something apart, when it goes back together, it will be slightly better. I know that sounds cheesy, sounds like a, a Saturday morning cartoon special, but I just, every time I take something apart, I think when I put this back together, if I just make it a little tiny bit better, then every time you take your vehicle apart, change something, it gets better and better and better. So I'm also gonna run you around, show you a couple of things that I changed so that, you know, it's slightly better. <laughs> Okay, so for starters, you'll notice that everything is black, even like the inside of the fiberglass panel, I have painted black so that when you look inside here, it just has a, a cleaner look to it. Um, but I guess because of that, let me go grab a light so I, you guys can see what I'm pointing out. All right, there we go. So when I reassemble this, that's gonna be, it's hard to get this camera in there. When I reassemble everything here, and of course you'll notice everything now has a nice fresh coat of paint on it. Everything's cleaned up, ready to go. If you look, every single bolt, almost every single bolt, there's a couple that don't have this, but any critical bolts now when they go back together, they get torched down, they get thread locked with blue thread locker, and then they get this, what looks like, let me go to another bolt for that. Here we go. So every bolt that gets put back together, it gets torqued, it gets loctited, and then this little thing here that looks like blue paint, that's what they call torque check, and it's just this little, stuff that you put on the threads and on the nut and then you can then visually check this and if the if the nut is backing off you'll see that it breaks the paint there and then you know you've got an issue every bolt has that and it makes it so that when you do an inspection you can just kind of run around and, and check all the torque checks and make sure that everything's still nice and tight so on the reassembly everything gets that treatment the suspension gets cycled to make sure that things are moving freely, make sure nothing's binding, same thing with the steering, same thing with everything. So after I had that done, then it was time to put the electrical in. And the electrical, don't mind this, this is the wiring for the 
antennas, which I have not finished yet. I didn't make any major changes here. This is all the same. I did wrap my wire loom. If you remember before, I had zip ties on everything. I had done that so that I could clip the zip ties if I needed to make some changes. The zip ties actually works really, really well, but if I'm being honest with you, the princess in me really just didn't like the look of that. So what I did is I wrapped this stuff with that felt tape. I'll have, I'll have links in the descriptions for some of this stuff, but I wrapped this stuff with the felt tape. I only, I only had to wrap it with the felt tape in tight areas like this. Everything else, what I did, like all of the longer runs, like all the way going through here and up under the dash, is wrapped with this split loom. And if you, well, let me show you some of it here. I wrapped it with this stuff, which is like, it's kind of like expanding sleeve, but it has a slit in it. So you can just open it up and wrap it around your harness and then it actually snaps back around itself. And I bought uh, three quarter inch and one inch. And as it turns out, the three quarter inch was, was large enough to do everything. I didn't need the one inch, but Whenever I had long runs, I just wrapped it with this stuff and then I would just felt tape it at the ends. And then in doing that, I was able to wrap the wiring, give it a real clean look. And then most of it, like that split loom stuff goes from here up all the way through the firewall, basically almost right up to the ECU. So all of this, if I needed to make some changes, all I have to do is peel the felt tape off at both ends and then I can just pull that loom off. Now in areas like this where it's a little bit more chaotic, I did wrap it with the felt tape. I took advantage of not having the engine in here where I could wrap this stuff and clean it all up. I might pay for that when I have to make some repairs and whatnot to these wires, but you know, I just, I really like the way, I like the clean look of having it wrapped so while I had everything taken apart I took advantage to to do some of that another change I made is the way that my wiring used to run is I had the there's a main harness right there and it used to go under the firewall right here and then it went under the fuel cell up and then popped out at the ECU right there and when it would go down and it would be underneath the fuel cell here, that was no man's land. You couldn't get to it at all. It was, it was a real hassle. So what I did is now the wiring, the harness comes through here. It turns up right here. It stays on this side of the firewall. It goes behind the seat with the understanding that the seat is actually pretty easy to take out. So if you needed to do some major electrical work there, you would just take that seat out and then I cut a slot in the firewall so you can actually just, if you need to, if you unbolted this and just pulled this forward, you can take the whole firewall out and then you have access to all the wiring and it would still, the wiring would still be there. So it made, it made access to the wiring a lot, lot, a lot simpler. And then another thing I did is I keep going in here in this dark hole, but if you notice, I split, where is it here? Let me get the flashlight again. Okay, I split the harness into two. So this harness right here, the big harness, is all fuel injection. It's only fuel injection. I have a bunch of wires that run up to the front here because I've got drive-by wire. So I think there's like eight, wires that run to the throttle pedal and then there's two wires for this switch there's two wires for that switch so there's a pretty decent sized bundle that runs up to the the dash but this now is a separate these plugs here are for the brake lights and things like that and those primarily came come from the switch panel here and i separated those those are separate wiring harnesses now this harness here is lighting and things like the brake lights, things like that. And this, this thicker harness 
comes through here and that's where it breaks and it goes to the distribution block or the relays or the ECU and then here it continues its way on to the engine. Before I put the fiberglass panels back on, I buffed them just with a, a real quick, like a finishing buff, not because I think these are show quality panels, but I wanted to knock off any overspray. I mean, they still have a lot of orange peel and whatnot, but I wanted them to start with a nice smooth finish. So I did that to everything. Another thing I did is I carpeted, I painted the inside of the fiberglass panels black, wherever you could see it. So like if you look, you know, that is painted black now. So when you look at the inside, it's not so obvious that those are fiberglass panels. And then I carpeted other parts of the panel just so that, I mean, you've got to admit that makes that area look nice now because it has it has carpet that matches the firewall and the electrical panel there. I painted the dash. The dash was aluminum. It's still aluminum, but it was just raw aluminum. I painted it flat black along with the chassis just because I felt like the silver aluminum wasn't going to look good. So I painted that. And then the dashboard is still aluminum, but I painted it with a mix of the fluorescent yellow and the blue, just like I did the body to give it that, you know, somewhat of a green mixed look. Cuz I thought it would be it would be nice to bring some color inside the chassis and it is right in line with where that mix is happening outside, so I thought I thought that looked kind of good. I painted the drive shafts, of course, just like everything else. I made them all legit. I greased up the splines. I put the boots on the splines. Before, on the inboard end here, these were the 1310 U-joints. I upgraded all this stuff to, these are the, I think they're called 760 U-joints, which are the same ones that are on that end. And this is temporary because I have found some CVs that I can run, but the CVs that go on this end, remember this is the Toyota 4Runner spindle, those are back ordered like 12 weeks. So I figured go ahead and finish these drive shafts up so that I can tinker around with it like this. And then once the CV joints show up, then I'll install those and then I can really let loose with it. But I didn't, I didn't want to have it not drivable. So I went ahead and finished those up, made them a little bit stronger. And then I also shortened up my travel. So I'm getting about two inches less travel on the droop which should also help protect those U-joints a little bit. So that's where I'm at on the final build. Like I said, I, I feel like I'm probably three quarters of the way done. Right after I make this video, I'm going to put the engine in and then I can really, once I have the engine in, I can start doing the final assembly on all the engine stuff and then I can do the roof. Then once I get the roof on, I can do the light bar and really that, that will be about it. And as soon as it's done, I'm gonna take it back to the track because I'm, I'm dying for another go at the track out there. So I'm super excited about that. But regardless, I wanted to share with you guys what I've done this far. I'm sure I'll do a video of the final build, but you know, that's probably a couple weeks away yet. And I didn't wanna get, I didn't wanna jump too far ahead as to where I would miss a lot of uh, what I've shown you guys. Like I didn't put in the driver's seat yet because I wanted to be able to get the camera in there and show you some of the changes I made on the wiring and things like that. So I'm looking forward to getting to the track knowing that everything is Loctited and tightened down and uh, things like that. So regardless, I am rambling again. I always end up rambling on these videos, but uh, that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you guys where I'm at with the build. Hopefully the next one will be really exciting because it'll be the 100% final build. So anyways, thanks for watching the video. Helping, hope. <laughs> anyways, that's it for this video. I hope it's helping you guys with whatever you're working on and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.